Welcome low ego action heroes. I'm Debbie Levitt from Delta CX. We are a full service CX and UX consultancy. And this is my Axure 10 core skills course. I've been using Axure since February, 2011, and I've been teaching it for many, many years. And in fact, I've been one of Axure's recommended trainers since 2014. This course is designed to take you from super Axure newbie or Axure afraid all the way through to confident intermediate. So if you've landed on this one video, there are many, many others. Please check our Axure lessons playlist for a lot more videos about using Axure. The Delta CX YouTube channel has over 500 videos on it as of when I'm recording this in December 2021, and I hope you'll subscribe and join in some of our live streams. I'm live usually three or four times a week with teaching UX research and design, talking about CX, helping people get into the profession, helping leaders and managers, and of course, don't forget, Tuesday office hours, ask me anything. So subscribe and hang out here. So thanks for being here. Please subscribe and let's jump into that next actual lesson. Let's talk about style effects. Very often when you have an item, especially like a button, you want it to have different states. You might want it to have a hover or mouse over state so that the visuals change when someone's mouse goes over it. You might want there to be a mouse down or click style when people actually click on it, it changes. I don't use that anymore, but it, I remember when it was hot. Um, there might be other states that you need. What does this button look like when it's disabled? Things like that. And Axure has that built in. We don't have to start writing specialty interactions that says, hey, Axure, when somebody hovers over this, I need you to do a special action. These are just built into Axure as what's called style effects. And you'll find them up here in properties land. So make sure you're on the interactions pane. You have selected a widget and take a look at style effects. If you're not seeing everything, make sure you have show all here. And style effects in Axure 10, the available ones as of when I'm filming this are mouse over, mouse down, selected, disabled, error, and focused. These are almost the same if you're still in Axure 9. You've got all of those except error. So uh, here's how we're going to use them. Let's imagine that we want to create a hover state for this. Now we might think, let's go into mouse over style and oh yeah, let's do a color and a thing. Hey, resist the temptation to do manual styling here. We want to have global control over these colors. So let's go into our widget manager. I'm going to duplicate this. I'm going to call it primary button hover. And let's say just to mix it up a little bit that when we hover, we get soft peachy color and we get black text or really dark charcoal. And uh, let's for fun, just say the bold unbolds itself. So see, there was a toggle there, bold, unbold. It's a little weird, but you'll get used to it. Now we've created a hover style, but we haven't applied it. So now with the widget selected that you have in mind, come over to add style effect. In this case, we're gonna do a mouse over and we're gonna say we have a widget style. We have a global widget style, which is our primary button hover. You can see Axure is giving us a preview of it. It was that soft peach with black text that wasn't bold. And so now I can say, okay. And Axure says, see, here's how that looks. And again, I can go into this again if I need to change it or remove this style, say delete. But basically, that's what's going to happen when I hover. Now, we can test this over in our preview. Let's get find my way back to this page. That's my hover state. So notice the button doesn't do anything yet. I'm not getting the hand with the finger to show that there's an interaction here. Axure still sees just the text on the button. I could double click and select it. But the idea is that the hover state is working. So let's jump back and take a look at a couple of other styles that we could create. We could create a disabled style. 
if this button is not available for people to use until something magical happens, which we'll learn about later, enabling and disabling buttons because of interactivity, then let's give it a look. I'm going to duplicate and say disabled. Perhaps my disabled button is a bit of a medium gray. Oh, well, that's a slightly transparent black, but okay, I'll take it. Let's just play around. And I uh, won't say bold and we'll say 18 point and black. All right, let's give that a try. Now, again, we've created a style, but we didn't apply the style. So with the uh, widgets you have in mind, you can say add style effect disabled. I have a global widget style and it's going to be primary button now, again, it's hard to see those. And so sometimes you might find yourself resizing the panes so that you can get a better look at some of the stuff that's in there. Again, that's up to you how you want to lay out your uh, interface. So now we've got a disabled style and a mouse over style. I'm not going to see the disabled style by default unless I check this box. This says disabled. Now this button is going to be disabled by default. And in Axure, that means not only will it get its disabled visual style, but it will also be unusable. If you have built interactions on this button, they now won't work until the button is enabled. And again, we have a separate lesson on enabling and disabling buttons. Uh, same for error. If you want there to be a style for anything, and we'll, we'll work with this later when we do form fields. If you want there to be a style for something, you would create error. If you want it to be error by default, you would check this box. And some of these uh, check boxes are also available in the context menu. So disabled by default, not disabled by default. I've unchecked it. So unchecking it from the context menu also unchecked it here. So I can have multiple styles on each button. And this is a reason why I tend to copy and paste some of my buttons across pages, or I tend to design them first and then reuse them. Again, some people might try to turn this into a master, but making it look and work different across pages can feel like a little bit more of an advanced thing. So for now, just get used to um, the styling and using these buttons. You can always graduate later to more advanced techniques. As for the other style effects like uh, focused and selected, we're going to do selected style a lot together. So hold tight for that one. And focused, we're going to talk about when we do form fields. Uh, mouse down, I don't really use anymore. So for now, that's this lesson, and I'll see you in the next video.